This was never a video anyone should have had to create in the first place. But apparently, over the last week, the majority of the world's population is educated on over 75 plus years of Palestinian history. I'm going to give you the real history about what happened in this region of the world. For this, we have to go back many years. Let's talk about the British promise. Why were the British making promises about other people's country, you ask? Power. They promised Arab leaders independence if they rose up against British the British enemy, which were at that time the Ottomans. One month after Balfour's letter, British took over Palestine, which ended a 400 year rule by the Ottomans. First, I have to take you back even further to tell you how this came to be. At this time, Christians, Jews and Muslims lived in harmony. Theodor Herzl, an Austrian man in 1896, published the Judenstadt, which in translation means the Jewish state. Within this, he said the only way for Jews to avoid Europe's anti-Semitism was not only to leave, but to create their own country. In the first Zionist conference, the year after the publication of the Jewish state in Switzerland, attendees agreed on a program which allowed uh, Jewish people to freely move to Palestine. From this, the Zionist movement really picked up pace. Zionists were raising money for people to move to Palestine. It was encouraging investors to invest in property and businesses in Palestine. And from this moment on, the Zionist movement accelerated. A lot of high-level officials in Britain supported the Zionist movement, even though they were not Jewish. All of this and more led to the Balfour Declaration in 1917, which was Britain's pledge to establish a home for Jewish people in Palestine. The Palestinian people were never given a choice in this matter, and as things slowly went on, as time increased, Palestinian people realised that Britain's idea of independence and giving this, them this promise of independence to them was never going to happen. And they realised that all Britain were doing was giving their country to other people. 1936 came strikes and British and Haganah forces attacked Palestinian people. They attacked homes, they raided homes and in return Palestinians fought back. The Peel Commission aimed to fix this. Obviously the British decided to uh, draw lines down the country to separate this between a Jewish state and a Palestinian country. And this led to over 250,000 Palestinians being forced to remove as this land was being taken over by the Jewish state. By 1939, 10% of adult Palestinian males were either exiled, arrested, injured or killed. In November 1947, the UN, which just to clarify back then in 1947, only was made up of a few countries. They decided to carve out 55% of Palestinian territory to the new Jewish state. But of course, the Zionists knew that when the British were leaving, they, couldn't, they didn't just want to take that. They took more and they're still doing it to this day. One brutal event that took place really fueled the Zionist movement. And this happened on April 9th, 1948, where the village of Dir Yassin was attacked and over 250 people were attacked and killed. And this led to Palestinians fearing for their lives and escaping. When the British ended their mandate in 1948, over 250,000 Palestinians had fled. And it was at this moment when the apartheid state of Israel was created. So over 75 years, 75 plus years, of oppression against Palestinians, with the British hand in hand at the cause of it. The new state of Israel made up 78% plus of what had been Palestinian land. Three quarters of Palestinians became refugees, and this is often referred to as the Nakba. In Arabic, in English translation, quite literally means the catastrophe. And here is the history to which we arrive to today. This week, you guys have seen the horrendous attacks which have been happening. I cannot quite believe that the world is supporting the Zionist movement to supporting the apartheid state. This has been 75 years plus of oppression and Palestinians, not even Palestinians, Hamas, which I would never compare those to when they fought back. And one thing I cannot wrap my head around was that Egypt told the apartheid state that Hamas was going to ta attack days before. Now for me, this leads me to believe that Israel knew this information and allowed it to happen to fuel their cause to take over the whole of Palestine. I firmly believe this and I believe this to be true. Israel will not stop until the entire population of Palestinians have been wiped off this planet, off their country 
exiled, left, killed, injured, entire families gone. And the entire world is letting it happen. Why is this? Where is humanity? Yesterday, Israel gave a 24-hour notice for 1.1 million Palestinians to leave northern Gaza, the northern areas of Gaza, before they flatten the entire area. 1.1 million. 1.1 million. Where can they go? The only area, only way out of Gaza had been destroyed. It was bombed immediately by Israel. It was bombed. There's no way out. Water, electricity, food cancelled. There's no way medical workers can arrive into the areas that Palestinians need after they've been killed, murdered, injured, attacked by the apartheid state. Israel gave permission for the Red Cross to enter into Gaza. They did. Tell me what happened. Tell me. Israel attacked every single member of the Red Cross dead for trying to help those Palestinians that were injured by Israeli attacks by Israeli airstrikes. White phosphorus is now being used, which is an international war crime. Do you know what white phosphorus does? If human skin is in contact with white phosphorus, white phosphorus will burn your skin, burn your flesh off until it reaches the bone. You die with your flesh burning off of you. This has been used in Palestine, in Gaza and in South Lebanon. Why is the world not speaking? Where is humanity? I urge every single one of you to keep fighting for the Palestinian cause, for fighting for what's right. And this is just a message for any of you in the US, the United States. The last time your government got involved with a situation like this in the Middle East, over one million Iraqis were killed. Don't make the same mistake again.